it is believed that the first humans were born around 200,000 years ago after which they had to go through the driest and the coldest period of ice age right then they crossed and moved from africa through india to australia while the second group had already crossed the red sea and populated the middle eastern as well as central asian countries while all this was happening in the east the first humans had already gone to the west they had traveled to the west and entered and settled in europe right so around 15000 years ago the first humans also crossed the bering strait and finally they reached america so you see that the movement of people was going on it was continuous and it was across the globe finally around 12000 years ago the agricultural revolution took place and development began so the world developed and advanced to become as it is today right so the movement of people from one place to another can be termed as migration so we can say that the story of migration is the story of human kind so to understand migration that is the movement of people from one place to another we need to consider a story so the story says that ravi who is a 8 year old boy with his family shifted from india to australia why so so his father had got a beautiful job opportunity in australia that was better than that he currently had in india so the family ravi's family decided to shift from india to australia however since they had a sentimental attachment to their homeland ravi's father had decided that after he had completed some 20 to 30 years of service in australia he would come back to india so this movement of ravi's family from india to australia as we can see is temporary and not permanent so in order to define migration we can say that human migration is the movement of people from one place to another right so movement of people from one place to another for the purpose of living in a new location right so ravi's family shifted from india to australia so australia is their new location they're going to stay there because ravi's father has got a nice beautiful job opportunity in australia right and this relocation can be permanent or it can be temporary that is for a certain period of time so as i just told that ravi's family is shifting to australia only for a certain period of time and not forever so it's a temporary migration right so here we understood two things that migration is the movement of people from one place to another in order to live in a new location either permanently or temporarily right so the second point is that migration can be of two types also in today's global climate people who migrate from their homeland or the land of origin to another country or continent for various reasons they are known as emigrants from the country they are moving out while the country that is they are relocating to the destination country there they'll be known as immigrant so here ravi's family is an emigrant to india while they are an immigrant to australia so people often get confused between emigration and immigration well there's a simple trick to remember the correct meaning of the correct word so if we talk about emigration we can take the initial of the word emigration that is e now e can be associated with exit so emigration is what we are exiting people who are exiting a country they are emigrants while the initial of immigration that is i can be associated with in so they are moving into a country so we can say that you emigrate that is you exit from your home country while you 
immigrate to another country so now i hope you will remember the right meaning of the right word so far we understood the meaning of migration and we also understood the meaning of emigration and immigration however there's one more important thing that we need to remember while we are talking of migration so you see coming back to ravi's story india is where they lived initially and then they migrated to australia right so india can be considered as a sending country it is sending its people to australia and australia is the host country or the receiving country so there are sending as well as receiving country people migrate from the sending country to the receiving country it is often seen that people tend to migrate from developing nations to developed nations so we have seen that people from india tend to migrate to countries like uk usa canada australia right why because there they get better opportunities and so they migrate so here receiving countries are these while sending countries are these according to the world economic forum for example if we take ravi's case again we saw that ravi's family migrated from india that here becomes the sending country to australia that here becomes the receiving country right so the world economic forum has listed down the top 10 receiving countries or the countries that people migrate to most and these are the top 10 sending countries or the countries that send their people out to another country that is people from these countries tend to migrate more than any other country so here we need to remember and understand that there are certain driving factors that leads to the migration of people from one country to another we just saw that ravi's father got a good opportunity in australia and that is why he voluntarily migrated right he was not forced to migrate out of india he willingly left his country his homeland and migrated to australia so we can say that migration can be voluntary or involuntary so voluntary migration is done willingly while involuntary migration or forced migration is made to be done so they are forced to move out to another place now on one hand while voluntary migration can be to complete your higher education for a better job opportunity to acquire better health facilities or to improve your lifestyle on the other hand involuntary migration is also guided by various factors and reasons so let's look at these factors that lead to forced or involuntary migration so it is believed that around 300 million people live out of their land of origin right so isn't that a pressing issue it is a global issue we need to address the reasons that lead to forced migration and we need to resolve these problems now the refugee crisis in europe in 2015 was solely born out of war right and this was considered as one of the worst refugee crisis since world war 2 so have you heard about this particular event what do you think what could be the reason for this refugee crisis in europe in 2015 which is considered the worst refugee crisis after world war 2 what do you think could be the reason well now this european migrant crisis led to 1.3 million people claiming asylum in europe so as you can see as we go higher and higher the numbers keep increasing so there were around 1.3 million people asking for a refuge in europe and the conditions were very bad right so the main reason for this was a war in afghanistan and syria so we see that political unrest was the major factor that led to this refugee crisis the continuous political conflicts in that area in afghanistan in syria did not let people live there peacefully their life was at risk 
they were not safe and the security was a big issue and that is why it led or forced people to migrate from afghanistan and syria to europe so europe had faced an immense refugee crisis because of political unrest in countries like afghanistan and syria so we can say that political unrest is an important factor that can lead to forced or involuntary migration another instance of refugee crisis was because of the wars in afghanistan somalia and syria yes so these wars in these countries lead to or they are held responsible for more than half of the world's refugee population today's generation is also facing a major refugee crisis mainly because they are lacking political representation economic stability children are not getting proper schooling or health facilities and they are even being jailed and facing hostility from the host countries so addressing the issues addressing these major issues the reasons that lead to such crisis is a pressing issue in today's global climate now here's another instance you can see these sculptures represent a very sad unfortunate event have you ever seen these sculpture so this here is the famine memorial in dublin that is in ireland it is a collection of statues as you can see and these statues depict part of irish history you will be moved if you consider the number of people who lost their lives during this particular event so what led to this unfortunate event so famine was the main factor the main reason that led to millions of people starving in ireland and then they had to move to north america for food so you see that not only political unrest but famine could be a major factor that could lead to forced migration or involuntary migration people voluntarily didn't want to or willingly didn't want to leave their homeland and move to another such far land but they had to because they had no other option and they were choiceless they had to fill their empty stomach and they had to survive so they had to leave their homeland and move to a completely new country and settle there or take refugee there right so you see that political unrest as well as famine could be important factors or major factors that could lead to forced or involuntary migration so before we proceed with our lesson could you help me answer this question which factor led to the european refugee crisis of 2015 is it famine flood political unrest or earthquake so we just read a while ago that the main reason or the main factor that led to the european refugee crisis of 2015 was political unrest the continuous political conflicts that took place in afghanistan and syria another very important example where we can see that famine has played a major role in forced migration is the bengal famine of 1943 and this was in india so this particular event led to the migration of large number of people from villages to cities for food so this was another very important event that highlights the factor that is famine playing a key role in forced migration now have you heard of people moving out from islands to countries that are more stable and more safe yes a very good example of this is sundarbans so we have seen in this recent years that people in sundarbans in india have started migrating towards cities due to increasing vulnerability from climate change why so so the islands are sinking there's a rise in sea level the salinity of soil and water has increased to that extent that cultivation is almost impossible and there are shrinking opportunities for livelihood so people are forced to leave their homeland to leave these beautiful sundarbans and move to the city area right so you see that here climate is playing an important role it is leading to forced migration so we can say that climatic disasters is another very important factor that creates climate refugees p 
people that are forced to migrate to another place that is to take refugees somewhere else due to climatic changes right so climatic disasters create climate refugees that is people who are forced to leave their home and take shelter and find food elsewhere so you see that besides political unrest and famine climatic disaster is another important factor that can lead to forced migration now these climate refugees are often known as climate migrants too so these climate migrants are displaced from their place of origin for a short period of time right so climatic disasters like flood or storm often destroy the places where people live right so living in these destroyed these destructive places becomes impossible and people are forced to migrate for a certain period of time until their homes are renovated and the government gives them some compensation so you see that they are displaced only for a certain period of time this is what we need to note here so here we understand that migration can be temporary or permanent so as i just mentioned that migration can be temporary or it can be a long term migration so temporary migration also known as short term migration is generally to escape a disaster like a sudden flood as i've just mentioned or an earthquake or a war for a certain period of time so these factors can lead to the displacement of people or migration for a short period of time and that is known as short term migration now temporary migration is another form of short term migration that includes the seasonal movement of hired farm laborers and transhumans now you may ask what is transhumans so transhumans is the seasonal movement of pastoral people to warmer pastures in winter and back in summer right so this seasonal movement is generally noticed in the himalayan region in india where nomadic tribes are found practicing this generally so temporary migration is also a short term migration that leads to seasonal movement of people for a particular purpose that is to warmer pastures now so on the other hand we also have long term migration so in the very beginning i talked about the first humans well if you remember the first humans were traveling or they were migrating to various places on earth for a permanent settlement they were going there to settle there permanently to make a living there so long term migration is another category and this is generally driven by the need for better job opportunities educational and health facilities and mostly to improve one's overall lifestyle so in this lesson we understood the meaning of migration that is very simple the movement of people from one place to another in order to live in a new location and this can be either for a permanent purpose or for a certain period of time right so here we understood that migration can be temporary or it can be permanent we also understood that migration is not always done willingly or voluntarily it is also involuntary or forced migration right so we understood that forced migration can have various factors guiding it like political unrest famine and also climatic disasters and the world needs to address these issues so that people are not forced to migrate out of the land of origin and they do not face such unfortunate events right in our next lesson we'll understand the types of migration don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it is rewarding too so register for free now